me as a dominatrix. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hello chicken, it's your fanbot overlord here, Cece Desist. And boy, do I have a video for you. I thought today I would celebrate the fact that my AliExpress order of wigs finally arrived. I wanted one wig with bangs so I could do this kind of like is Betty Page the right reference? This is the finished look and I hope you won't mind sitting through, watching me put it together. We'll have a little bit of a chit chat. I normally keep my error very 20s, 30s. If I'm feeling a bit spicy, I might venture into the 40s. So this is an error that isn't, it's not that it's not in my wheelhouse, but I just don't do it very much. I personally think that I look kind of beautiful, but you know, who's judging? Me, always. Without further ado, let's get into the video. If you don't know who I am, my name is Cece Desist. I'm a cabaret performer from Perth, Australia. I like to sing, dance, and tell a couple of jokes. I highly encourage you to please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Every little bit of engagement helps me out ever so much. Thank you, mm, kisses. Let's get into the video. <laughs> I broke the mirror. I am never gonna get used to that. I've gone ahead and moisturized, primed, and blocked the eyebrows. I'm going in with my TV paint stick, and I'm gonna cover the brows up first, and then work with the rest of the face. I have been obsessed with blending with this big, fucking sponge. When I say big, it's like half the size of my head. It saves a lot of time, so I would highly recommend getting one of these. This is from Real Techniques. I think it's called like the face and body sponge. I think it's intended so you can use it on your body because it's so big. I just use it on my face. So if you want to save time, if you're like in a rush to get to the gig, that might be something you'd want to learn how to do. Like doing your makeup quicker. So one of these is going to help a lot. I'm gonna go and highlight. I usually apply to the high points of the cheekbones. Um, the look that I'm going for today, I wanna to be really, really like snatched, bring everything up in that kind of direction. I'm gonna kinda of, like focus it that way. I also do just in between the eyebrows. Lately, I have been doing my highlight in the triangles under the eyes, but also connecting it to under the nose or the cupid's bow. So I'm gonna start with the cupid's bow. And I'm just gonna dot in the triangle area and kind of like connect it. It's just been very flattering for me lately. Well, hurry up and catch the guy, I've got filming to do. Or woman. It's 2020 and women can be criminals too. And I'm just gonna touch on down the nose. I'm gonna blend starting with the edges and then go into the center. So I, I usually start with the edges. I'm gonna go in with a cream contour shade from my RCMA Vincent Kehoe, I'm sorry for butchering the pronunciation um, palette, which is great if you are an aspiring uh, makeup artist, but I mostly use it on myself. And remember, we're creating a very like snatched angular kind of look right now. I'm gonna find my cheekbone, keep it parallel to the highlighter line that we created, and slowly bring it down. And the higher up the placement of the color, the higher up your cheekbones will look. So I'm gonna blend upward. And of course you can add more color, but it's just easier to start with less and then build than to start with a lot and then try and take it away. to clean up underneath with a highlight shade. And I'm also just gonna start on my nose contour with the creams, starting on 
the furthest at the top and then bring it to a teeny tiny slope at the end. And I also have not contoured my forehead, so I'm going to do that as well. Starting with the temples. And I just realised the wig I'm going to wear has bangs, so this didn't matter at all. But I will know. So we're doing it anyway. When I was a teenager I had, um, I had bangs and I got in this really bad habit of never doing foundation on my forehead because I was like, why do I need to bother? My bangs are going to cover it up. And then when I grew my bangs out and I didn't have bangs anymore, I was still only applying foundation up to about here. And I was like, it's fine, no one's ever going to notice. And in photos, I had this like pink forehead and like a whatever face. It was a, it was a mess. It was a, it was a decision. And I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> now we're going to powder it down. I'm going in with a powder contour palette and I'm taking this uh, big fan brush which I find gives me a really precise and blended at the same time contour. I'm starting with my ashiest shade, my palest shade. I'm not going to stamp it where I want it. Trying to maintain that like high up angular thing we were going for before. And just like feather it. Trying to blend it upwards. And then just dragging it, whatever's left on the brush and what's on the cheek downward. Now I like I don't like to sweep right down. I like to sort of do like a little curve, which is how cheekbones actually look. They don't go straight into the corner of the mouth, they actually like come down here. I'm going to blend that sort of a bit further and warm it up a little bit with a bronzer. I also use the bronzer to blend my jaw contour downward into the neck. I'm going to apply blush this one. So I usually go with one of these two because I'm quite pale. I'm going to go a little deeper and use this one here. We're hitting the apples of the cheeks but also like I guess between where the highlight and the contour is. A little Neapolitan ice cream moment. I'm going to go back into my powder contour set and I'm going to do my nose now. Grab a little bit of the lightest highlight powder on this palette with um, usually a flat brush, but I can't find one, so I'm just gonna dab a little bit on a pinched edge of this powder puff and drag it down. And I'm buffing off the excess. I'm gonna do a thing, something. What am I doing? Spray. Yes. I'm setting that with a setting spray. While that's wet, I get a fan and I lock it in. And I feel really glamorous. Mm. So that's gonna set it all in and it's also going to, I guess, give us a less powdery look. It's kind of gonna like, kind of like melt it all together and it looks just a little nice, you know? I'm gonna have to do brows first because I gotta remember that my bangs come to about here in the look. So I'm gonna get those sorted first. Now I'm gonna start drawing it with a pencil and eventually I'm gonna go over with a liquid eyeliner. I'm not gonna go quite where my natural brow starts like I usually would. I'm gonna go a little bit above for my starting point. This will be my arch. Rather than end it here like I normally would, I'm gonna bring it up here. I'm gonna go over with the liquid eyeliner and this part is terrifying. 
So I'm gonna clean that up. I'm using my highlight shade on a flat brush to clean this up and create a very tapered tail at the end. Blend that highlight a little bit. my base shade as an eyelid base. There's probably better ways to apply this. I still got my nails done. My nails are done. I got my nails done. I just realized the lady on the bronzer that I'm using, this is kind of the look we're gonna go for. So I wanna do a little bit like a fetishy kind of Dita kind of thing. Mainly we wanna place our eye product focusing in the outer corner here and creating some sort of angled sweep to really give us that like, mm, like mm, you know what I mean? I'm gonna start with like something kind of ashy and I'm just stamping here. When I stamp a product as like eyeshadows, I like to use like something that's somewhat fluffy because then you don't get these harsh lines that take forever to blend out later. It kind of does the job for you a little bit. And I'm trying to place it in sort of a, a really pointy triangle. What do you call it? It's not obtuse. Right. It's not isosceles. Is it is No. Acute. We want an acute triangle. And that's not a triangle that makes you go, aww. <laughs> so stupid. I'm adding more product and I'm going in the direction of the triangle that I've just placed down. Then I'm gonna grab a lighter ashy shade and work that into the crease. I'm not gonna do as big a draggy eye as I normally do. I'm gonna experiment and see if I can make myself look like a real woman. Also bring that into the nose contour. It just completes the whole thing. I like to flick in this angled direction. It's as if we're trying to connect it to the tail of the eyebrow without, you know, doing that because that would be messy, but you know what I mean? We're going in that direction. I might just give it some emphasis, but with my darkest brown shade. So right in the crease, really focusing it there. And then flick the edges. And then blending with a lighter transition shade almost. Same thing on the other side. We'll start creating a crease with the white highlight shade. Okay, so you know when I said I was gonna do a less draggy look and look more like a woman? The test determined that was a lie. Oh my God, speaking of Maury Povich, has anyone ever like gone on one of those reality TV YouTube rabbit holes and found themselves watching Jeremy Kyle? It's like English Maury Povich, but the dude is so much more savvy. Instead of being like, hmm, the test determined that was a lie. Hmm, you are not the father. <laughs> Jeremy Kyle's like, you're bloody liar. You bloody donut. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep it in the inner corner kind of region. Going a little bit into this inner corner here. I guess a brown shimmer. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I did on this eye over on this eye. With our liquid eyeliner, starting at the outer corner. And I've put too much on already. I'm gonna start by placing the wing where I want it. And I just stamp it, kind of, so I get the side of the applicator and I'm gonna go in the direction of where we've placed the eyeshadow when you do it this way and, and you close your eye again it should look kind of like a little gap here if you connect that gap it's just not gonna translate to a hooded eye you'll know what I mean if you have hooded eyes and you give this a go so now I'm going to connect it to the rest of the eyelid stay very close to the eyelash line we uh, almost like got the eye and sort of turned it in that way how we're going to do that is we're going to put a little bit of a inner eye kind of moment and connect it to this part of the waterline here I 
Don't know how to articulate what it is that I'm doing. But this is also a great technique if you feel like your eyes are too far apart for any reason. Um, I think your eyes are beautiful, but it's up to you, baby. I'm gonna take this flat kind of, kind of fluffy-ish brush, which I find fits perfectly under my eyelashes. So I'm gonna go in with what we started in the crease with. Tap off some excess and sort of join it up to where the wing is. And then just go underneath the lashes. The closer we get to the, uh, I guess, tear duct area, we're just gonna slope it down a little bit. I'm gonna um, give myself a little bit of white eyeliner. This is how we're gonna really create it to look as though it's going down this way and up that way. So I get a black pencil and I'm gonna focus it on this outer corner here in the waterline. And then when we get to the middle of the eye, we sort of descend it below the lash line. And then I like to use this to almost contour underneath the lash line. I'm going to re-deepen up the crease like I've done here. So like create like a bit of a crisp line, but not so crisp that it looks fake. I mean, we already look fake, but... And then I would further just buff that a bit with that brush from before. But of course do mascara after that. So we want to look down into a mirror and then wiggle upwards. This is going to separate the lashes and it's going to prevent clumping at the same time. I think I'm happy with the eyes. I want to move on to lips now. I'm going to start with up the top. I've got the shape that I want. Now I want to go in with my favorite red lipstick. Wow! I rushed ahead. Well, by rush ahead I mean my camera died. So what I did off camera is obviously I, I put on some false lashes, I put on my beauty mark, and obviously I put on this very fabulous wig that is reminding me of the absolute pain in the ass it is to have a front fringe. Maybe I should just paint my forehead black and then that will fill in the gaps. Is that an idea? Do people do that? Let me know in the comments below. <gasps> oh my goodness, I feel like a temptress. And you know what? The fantasy would almost be complete if I wasn't wearing a fucking Fitbit. But I am not about to let these calories go undocumented. What did we learn today? That bringing things up this way gives you a bit of a <sighs> snatch kind of look. We also learned that Kat forgets to do the finishing touches. Finishing spray. I'm gonna apply the highlighter because I should have done that, but I'm a naughty girl. I feel fucking sexy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my sexy 50s fetish pinup look. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've been Cece Desist. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel and follow me on all of my socials, which are at Cece Desist everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And for everything all in one place, you can always go to www.ccdesist.com on the internet. I've been a woman. Thank you for having me. See you.